But since I've turned my life back to Christ, I have so many awesome people in my life. Yeah, yeah boy. That, that are, that are, God has placed in my life. God placed John in my life. You know, and we don't get to hang out a lot, but when we do, man, it, the Spirit of the Lord is there. Like we, we just have a connection. Just like we have a connection here because we have the same spirit. Yeah. You know? So when, when, when we start talking, it's just we're drawn to each other and it like clicks. It's like, oh yeah, you're my, we're family. You know, I can just meet someone who maybe it's their first time here, but they start talking about their relationship with the Lord and it's all of a sudden like, I don't know, it's worked for a long time. It's because our spirits are connected. Amen. I, I look all throughout here. There's so many people that I'm just getting to know, you know? That I know, and I still see that often, but when I see them, they're very important to me, and they feel connected, and we feel connected. It's because we have the Holy Spirit that connects us. Yeah. We love each other no matter if we see each other a lot or if we see each other a little. It's because the presence of God is love. You know what I mean? And you feel it instantaneously when you Amen. tap into that. Right. It's really, really a beautiful thing, you know? Amen. Um, so we're, you know, this is the grand finale of victory. I, uh, I know that if you've been coming here, and the people that I know that have been coming a lot, you've been growing in your life. You've been seeing victories. You've been seeing victories, and it's so encouraging to hear all that. So, what I want to do is, you know, something that I always hammer home here at Gen X, we want you to read your Bible. Because that's really where the victory is at, is in God's Word. Because that's where the direction is. That's where you really, you know, revelations that God gives me, that's great. It will encourage you. It will give you a boost. But really all it's meant to do is for you to go and get your own revelation so you can dig in your... Because I can't live off my mom and my dad's faith. Right. Come on. Come on. Or I, 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 would, I, would, I never would have done dope in my life because my mom and dad are great Christian people who raised me right, read me the Bible, took me to church twice a week, prayed over me, gave me, you know, gave me a great life. But I still ended up running. Doing my own things because I was I was riding coattails. And then eventually I just went off and did my own thing, you know? So what I want to do is I want to read three passages from the Bible tonight. I'm going to read the passages and then we're going to go over it. And if I can make any sort of recommendation before you read your Bible, okay, something that's given me like massive breakthrough, and I think anyone who really dives into the word would can would agree with this, is pray before you read it. It's like when you pray before you read it, it's like it unlocks. Because that's how come, like, you know, there's college professors and, and really, really intelligent people that can read it and get nothing from it and read it like it's a dictionary. Because this book isn't based off intelligence, it's based off spirit. It's based off the Holy Spirit. So whenever you read, pray, and then it will come to life and it will give you revelation. So we're going to look at three little passages, and we're going to go over it, and I'm just going to share the revelation that God gave me. And I encourage you to go back and always read them on your own. Okay, so the first one we're going to start, this is a very, very fair, famous parable. I'm sure maybe you've heard it. If you haven't, well then, you know, here we go. So it's in Matthew 13. It's the parable of the farmer scattering the seed. Okay? Uh, it starts, I'm starting off with this in, the, in verse 1. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and and uh, sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into the boat and then sat there on top of people and stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds and he scattered them across the field. Some fell on the footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil and underlying, underlying rock. The seeds sprouted up quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted away underneath the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell upon thorns and grew up and got choked out because of they were tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a the crop 30, 60, and even 100 times what had been originally planted. Anyone who hears this, let them hear and listen and understand. So if you just read that, and you don't really, you're not really tapping into the spirit, you try. What in the world does this a farmer stone see? What is how is that supposed to change my life? Why is Jesus saying that? Okay? So that's why it's so important to tap into the spirit because then this builds your faith when God shows you stuff like this. Okay, so we're gonna go over each each type of soil that you know was talked about. Okay, so it says that he he threw seeds, right? Okay, so the seeds 
are like the word of God, okay? Christians, they, yeah, they are. They, they are the word of God, okay? That are getting scattered, okay? And like the, the, the hard soil, right, where the birds came and swooped it up, the birds are the devil. And the, and, 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 the, and the different types of soil is your heart. So the, 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 the one on the heart path where the seeds are thrown on there, and then the devil comes and swoops it up right away. You know, my mama used to tell me verses all the time, but I was in addiction. My heart was hard. No place for it to grow, so the devil just came and snatched that up. My mom tells me the same verses now. Now it's revelation. Now it helps me grow because my heart is different. That's why it's so important that you take care of your the Bible says guard your heart. Yeah. Make sure what are you taking into your in, through your eyes, through your ears, goes into your heart. Yeah. Guard your heart. That's why we talk about the kind of music you listen to, what you watch on television. You're planting stuff inside of you. Every time you watch something, every time you listen to something, every time you hang out with certain people, they're planting seeds in you, and it's probably not that. That's why it's important that you hang out together with a family like this, where we're planting encouraging seeds, loving seeds, forgiving seeds, grace, just letting you know that you're cared about. Don't ever isolate yourself. Amen. Right. Amen. Because then your, your, your mind will play tricks on you. Satan will get you all back up in a corner. Okay? So then the other soil that they said that, you know, it popped up quickly. But then it's kind of scorched in the way. So that's what it is in, you know, I've seen it in here. People come in here and you feel the presence of the Lord. I don't care if you've been here, if this is your first time here, or whoever it is that comes in here, you feel the Holy Spirit. You can't, it's undeniable when you come in here on a Tuesday night. The Holy Spirit is moving and you, you do, you experience the Holy Spirit. You experience God. And people will come up to me like, oh my God, I've never felt anything like that. Like, this is really going to change me. You know what I mean? But then they leave and that they're not feeling it anymore. They're not feeling that emotion because that's so easy to get you know, hyped up in it. When John's preaching, you're like, yes, yes. But you know, John don't follow you home. Okay. <laughs> So you know this don't work. 
way too long. And I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to help you. Because I live most of my life praying like that. Massive change in your life will happen when your prayer life evolves and goes to a higher level. Okay? So now we're going to the parable of the great feast. <coughs> this is in Luke chapter 14, verse 15. Hearing this, a man sitting at a table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it is to attend, what a blessing it would be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with a story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Then the banquet was ready. He sent his servants to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began to make excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. The other said, I've bought five oxen and i got to go try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned to his master and told him what he said. The master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets, into the alleys, into the town, and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. After the servant had done what he had reported, there is still more room. So his master said, go out to the countryside and behind the hedges and urge anyone you can find to come, and the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will even get the smallest taste of the banquet. I'm going to tell you right now, God planned this message for you tonight. There ain't no coincidences of what he said or what I'm saying, because the Holy Spirit is telling you and he's inviting you to victory. He's inviting you to grow in your life. He's telling you something that you know you need to hear. And the seed is being planted. Are you going to go home and make sure you garden right? And make sure that you water the seed that he's giving you tonight? Are you going to make sure to pull out the things that he's telling you to pull out? Are you going to tend to what he's doing in your life? Because this is your invitation. You've been hurt. You've been sad. You've been depressed. You've been confused. God's telling you right now, I can take it all away if you just listen. And I'll give you the peace that you keep hearing about. If you start taking care of your heart the right way. You start, you start paying more attention to your heart and taking literally the stuff that you're ingesting through your eyes and through your ears. It has more of an impact than you really even know. You, you think that it's no big deal that you're watching that movie. But those are visions and, and things and, and thoughts and their spirits behind all the stuff that's being made on that television to go into you and mess with your mind. But if you just stay focused on Jesus and spend, if you spend half the amount of time you spend on Facebook reading your Bible, your life will change, bro. Even half of it. You don't even give him 15 minutes, but you'll scroll through that thing for an hour and a half and look up and where where did the time go? You wasted it. That's where I went. Why not invest in something that's going to reap a real harvest instead of just passing the time? Your life is worth more than this killing time. You have purpose in your life. You have a calling on your life. And it ain't to look at other people's. No. Come on. Everyone wants to have this, this great adventure. They watch all these great movies and then they don't even leave their house. Like, man, what a great story that is. Your life has a story. Your life has a real story. You're supposed to be the hero. <laughs> Quit watching other people and being and admiring them. It's fake. There's a real life that's going on, and it's yours, and it's set up in an epic way. This is your invitation to go live your life. <laughs> What's your excuse? That's what he's saying. He made the banquet. Every, this is your invitation. Everybody got excuses, man. The more I'm in ministry, because I'm out there always inviting people to the group. And I, if you can't come to Generation Next, that's fine. It's not about Tuesday nights. Obviously, God works on Fridays at the hearts. Obviously, God works at the Tree of Life on Sunday mornings. He works everywhere in all sorts of different places. Go somewhere and get fed spiritually. Go somewhere and grow. Go somewhere and serve. Go somewhere and do something. And have the Lord work in your life. It don't only happen here. Come on, That's right. 
It's happening here, but you, all the people have other schedules. I understand that. There's people in here, they come in here, they don't have a job, and we pray. And they were coming every week, and all of a sudden they ain't coming no more because they have a job and they have called us. I'm like, I said, answer prayer. God bless you. Where are you going, though, now? Yeah. <laughs> because if you just get you, you get, God gives you a breakthrough, and then you just walk away from it, like, like we were saying, then all of a sudden you're going to take the wheel back over and you're going to fall off. You can, only, you can only write off that blessing for so long before all of a sudden you run it on E again. You run again. You back in jail. You drunk again. You You in the insane asylum again like me. I mean, it's all bad, bro. I mean, I've been there. It, that, that's not something I like to share, but sometimes it needs to be said because look at what God can do.
This has happened in my life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm praying for them. And just give them encouragement and then and be led by the Spirit. Just be you. God has you in that situation to witness to that person. Just be you. Don't try to be a pastor. Don't try to be a preacher. Be who you are created to be because that's why you're in that situation and not me. That's why you're talking to the person and not John or Pastor Andrew. Because there's something special inside of you that identifies with that person and will connect you to that person and you just have their sowing seeds. And then you pray for their heart that it'll land on fertile ground so they can receive the crop that, that grew up in your heart. There it is. Yeah. You just go and you sow seeds. You just a guy out there sowing seeds and you pray that it lands on the good soil. And if they get soil, you pray that God will tend to it and that it will fix it. And that someone else can water it. You plant it, someone else will come out and water it and Jesus will make it grow. The last one. So this is after Jesus said that God rose from the dead, okay? And Peter is with a bunch of the disciples, okay? So this is in John chapter 21, uh, verse 3. Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. We'll all go, they said. So they went out in the boat and caught nothing all night. And dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was, and he called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. They said, He said, Throw your net on the other, on the right side of the boat, and you'll catch some. So they did, and they caught so much fish that they couldn't haul in as many as they caught. So if you just read that, I mean, it's a, it's a cool story. It's like, you know, God doing more miracles, that's awesome. But there's a lot more deeper meaning to it than that. Because Peter is a fisherman. Okay? He's just out there living his life with his friends. Out there trying to fish on their own, doing their best. And they're getting caught. They're working real hard, too. They worked all night trying to catch fish on their own. Doing the best thing you want to do, right? They're professional fishermen. Got nothing. Catch them nothing. But then Jesus comes along and tells them, maybe if you try it like this. So what God is sharing with me on that is that, hey, I know you're out there trying your best, and you got your people around you, and you're working real hard, but you're still coming up short. Why don't you just go ahead and let me get into your life? Let me get into your boat, and you try a different way, and then you're going to bring so many blessings that you ain't even going to be able to handle them all. Healing our marriage. Hallelujah. Healing our marriage. Healing our marriage. 